with all of the engine internal parts put together and balanced, we're ready to build the block. So the first thing we're going to do is to get the through bolts ready. These are the main bolts which go either side of each of the main bearings. To get these prepared, they've been cleaned and then each bolt has a washer on the end of it, which you can see highlighted here. And then there's an O-ring which needs to be put onto the rods. This is done using this conical shaped tool here, which makes sure that the O-rings don't collide with any of the threads which could damage the O-rings. Once they are done and coated with assembly lube, they'll look like this. The half of the block which contains the oil pump is then put onto the engine stand and all of the main bearings are inserted. These are then given a generous coating of assembly lube and also the pin for the nose bearing is inserted, which you can see highlighted here. And there's also some lubricant put around this part so that when the two crankcase halves are bolted together, it won't pinch on the O-ring. Before the crankshaft goes in, the bolts are all double checked and triple checked just to make sure that the torque is all correct on them. Then the crankshaft is dropped into place, being careful to align the nose bearing with the pin. This is done so that we can check the clearance on the oil pump. This clearance has to be checked on the first three conrods. With the clearances checked, the oil pump's removed so that the oil seals which go underneath it can be fitted. And then there are four through bolts which have O-rings on them which have to be fitted. So these are pushed through and the O-rings fitted using the conical tool and then they're dropped back into place. And here you can see that the bolts hold themselves in due to the shape of the end of the bolt. With new timing chains fitted to the intergear assembly, this is then dropped into place along with the oil pump and the oil pump drive shaft. The oil pump is then fixed down by gently pushing it down onto the oil seal underneath it to make sure it seats properly and then new nuts fitted and marked after they've been torqued up. When the two case halves go together it's important that the con rods are standing vertically so they don't collide with the upper case. So here you can see the two con rods on the left have had tie wraps put round them just so that it wedges against the crank and it holds them in place. Also the final oil seals are fitted onto the oil pump. These will be lubricated with assembly lube. Now moving on to the other half of the crankcase. The new main bearings are fitted in place. Sealant is then applied around the edge of the case halves. This is done on both the upper and the lower case. The sealant is applied with a brush to give a thin, even coating. This is the sealant that's used, Loctite 574. Then assembly lube is applied to all the remaining main bearings and also directly onto the crankshaft. As soon as the crankcase halves are together, the outer nuts are put on and torqued up, starting from the inside and working out, and then the through bolts go in. Each through bolt is put in from the bottom, and then an O-ring and a washer go on, and then the nuts are tightened up. This was all done very quickly, so I didn't get a chance to take any photographs. We're making sure it was all done quickly before the sealant goes off. Then once the two case halves are together, there should be a nice even bead of sealant around the outside of the case. There's also a nut, which is for the intergear bearing. So that has to be torqued up. That was applied with a small amount of sealant underneath it. Then the outside of the case is cleaned up. So here we have the two case halves that sealed together. To finish this off, we need to do the front and rear seals. So clean up the area around the front seal. This can then be pushed into place if you have strong thumbs. The rear main seal is more involved. There's a multi-part special tool required for this. The first part is the same size as the end of the crankshaft and bolts into place. Then there's a tapered section, plastic part, which fits onto this. This enables the main seal to be pushed onto the metal part of the tool, as you can see here. Then the plastic part is removed and then there's a, a cup shaped tool which bolts into place which pushes the seal home so it pushes it squarely and to the correct depth. When that's done the outer part is removed and the tool can be completely removed from the end of the crankshaft. So here we see this seal in place. 
final thing we need to do on this is to fit a pulley onto the end of the crankshaft because the engine's going to have to be turned over when we fit the cylinders and liners. So there we have it, the crankcase is assembled, all bolts torqued up, cleaned and with both seals fitted.